Welcome to Forensic Science with me, Jen Curley. So we have a short kind of video today going through sort of me, so I'll introduce myself. We'll then go over through the course a little bit, do a little bit of a day in the life, and then finally frequently ask questions. So about me, so my background is in biology. I in fact had some of your uh, sons or daughters um, as for freshman biology. And I have been teaching at Franklin High School for about seven years now, um, teaching for 11 years. I got into teaching as a means of actually traveling after I got my undergraduate degree and spent a few years doing that. Found that I loved it, came back, got my master's in education, and here I find myself to this day. So about the course itself, so there's another link right here for the syllabus if you wanted to go through it. This course is essentially a series of mini units. So forensic science itself is a series of disciplines with specialties. So a person that is a ballistics expert is not the same person that is a handwriting expert. There's different training techniques and skills that go into each of these. What we do throughout the year is we kind of take each of those specialties as a little vignette in this larger scope of forensic science. And we talk about the application of biology, chemistry, and physics, sometimes in combination, sometimes in isolation, to this specialty. We do this by a series of case studies, so we'll talk a little bit more about this later on, but using case studies as a means to kind of hook students and sort of sell them on um, how this science is so important and sort of applying it. The skills we focus on, we do a lot of mathematical modeling. So the first one that we'll get into will be post-mortem interval, so calculating time since death. And so there's a lot of formulas that are involved in that as well and understanding where those formulas come from. There's a lot of analysis and then also collaboration and conclusion sharing that comes with. So when we do these case studies, it's going to present sort of the scientific evidence and um, underpinning sort of concepts that are used in this. But then it's essentially looking at how that information is then processed and reported out in the context of a case for us to be able to appreciate and use it. We also do a lot of writing, both informal and formal, where students are asked to sort of analyze evidence and make meaning with regards to a case. So in terms of intro, so how do we sort of gauge and involve students in class? We use a lot of this program called Pear Deck. So you can see a couple examples here. We looked at the OJ Simpson trial as a way of sort of framing or understanding evidence collection and chain of custody. So students did a reading and sort of learned the concept. And then we did a case study looking at the OJ Simpson trial to see what were some of the major issues around uh, the sort of LA crime lab with this case that sort of led to or became a part of sort of that acquittal. And so we examined that and we see that here that students kind of had the ability to, to say if they were still surprised at the end. And so it allows them to interact with the information. Same thing when we were talking about the necessity for documenting the scene, they watched this five minute video on triangulation. And then I asked them questions about random people and things from the video. So we could kind of see how fallible memory is and why documentation is hugely important. So we can see kind of how there's a multiple choice section in here as well. So this is just one way that kind of throughout class, students can periodically find themselves being engaged, even though we're not necessarily in the same class capable of having kind of consistent open class discussions. In terms of instruction and group work, so we use an online textbook, so students have access to this. They do not have any hard copies of materials that they need from me for the year. We use kind of for our case studies, we do a lot of video ones. They tend to be the most engaging and honestly get the most buy-in from students. In particular, there's a series, you might have even seen it called Forensic Files, that these little 20 minute videos where they really focus in on different skills. So for example, we'll watch one where like for post-mortem interval, where someone tries to turn the air conditioner on so that time since death gets messed up. And we kind of look at how you, would you adjust your calculations based on sort of someone doing that. And so these case studies sort of help and inform the information we're looking at. Another example, we do a lot of group work, so they have breakout rooms. It's a lot of discussing these cases, the evidence, its relevance, would it hold up in court? And one of the things that we did this past week is we actually did a little jury room where we essentially looked at the presentation and interpretation of evidence from a prosecution versus defense, and students sort of looked at that jury sort of courtroom process to look at how you would weigh that evidence in their rooms. So there's a lot of collaboration that's involved. In terms of frequently asked questions, so I got, are we doing labs? Yes, we are absolutely doing labs, um, simulated to the best that we can, and then we'll see kind of with hybrid what we're able to do in person. And then assessments, forensics doesn't have a lot of formalized assessments. Anything that we did have would more than likely be sort of in small quiz form and would be done on Google Forms. But this is not a course that kind of has unit tests at the end. It's more kind of summative projects that they are doing for each one.
So that was kind of our quick few minutes of time together. I, thank you so much for kind of taking the time to stop by and check out this course. If there's anything that I didn't address or if you have questions for me, my email is right there. That's honestly the best way to reach me. So curlyj at franklinps.net. And thank you again. Have a great night. Bye.